drivers have fatal crashes at four times the rate of adult drivers. I'm Jill Horner. This is Comcast Newsmakers. With me this hour is Pennsylvania State Representative Kathy Watson. Thanks so much for being with us. My pleasure. This is an issue we've talked about in the past, but statistics show that traffic crashes are the number one cause of death for teenagers. We think about the suicide, we think about drugs, but traffic accidents are the number one reason that teenagers die. Yes, they are, and it's preventable. We can do a better job. I think we understand there's no law we could design that will bring every young person, you know, and their passengers safely home every time, but we can do better than we're doing. So let's talk a little bit about what your legislation has included, and, and there have been different uh, incarnations of this over the past several years, but give us an idea as to the general intentions uh, of some teen driver laws. Uh, the teens right now operate under what's called a graduated driver licensing law. This simply upgrades that based on all the other states and their experience, studies as to what is it that teens tend to do wrong, how do we prevent that, make it better. So it, it includes more experience behind the wheel, taking it from 50 to 65 hours, 10 hours of nighttime specifically, five hours of inclement weather based on the crashes, reasons why they occurred. We know they need more experience nighttime and definitely during inclement weather with a vehicle. How does this compare to, to what happens throughout the country when it comes to teen drivers and laws related to teen drivers? Well, the truth is, sadly, we are one of only seven states who have not upgraded our graduated driver licensing law. So others, where we were the original leader in 99, others have gone far beyond us. So we're sadly lacking in that last group. So if, if Pennsylvania is behind in terms of other states when it comes to these laws, what are some of the steps that can be taken in order to change the laws and will that in fact make teen drivers and the rest of us on the roadway safer? Yes, it definitely will. Uh, we were also going to make the teens safer because we know that 55% of those in that car who are killed in a teen driver crash, and we're talking about teens, I should say, 16 and a half to 18 years of age. So all the legislation is aimed just at that age group. Uh, <clears throat> they're killed because they weren't buckled up and they're ejected from a vehicle. And what the accident reconstruction shows, had they been buckled, they would have survived the crash. It was a survivable crash, but not if you're ejected from a vehicle. So that's in there along with more time behind the wheel. Um, and we know that that will make things infinitely better for them. I should say when you said that, yes, I think a little known statistic that you and I have, uh, we're the 30% group that could be just coming down the roadway and the teen driver makes that uh, lapse in judgment, fatal mistake, and we're included in, fortunately, in, and hurt in a traffic crash. So it's to everybody's advantage for them to do a, you know, do a better job. What about distractions when it comes to driving? Teenagers have many distractions in, in their lives, but what about distractions behind the wheels, in, including other passengers in the car? And actually where you, you and I might think, uh, oh no, the cell phone is the worst distraction, or now the texting, and I have a separate bill about texting. But what we know is that still, when they've done all the studies, scientific studies, it is other teens in the vehicle. And it ranges that with one other teen in the vehicle, again, for that new driver, just one other uh, person with them, their chance for a crash goes up 39%. Put three of them in there and your crash rate increases 182%. So my bill would limit it to one other teen in the vehicle during that time period of 16 and a half to 18. Exception being if I'm the oldest in my family, three younger siblings, siblings or other young people who live in your household, that would be okay. Just a few seconds left, but what do you say to people who say, you know what, it's up to me as a parent to, to have the responsibility for my child. I don't need a law telling my child and me what to do. Uh, it, it is up to the parent and the parent's the primary person. What this law will do will be to support that parent to support what the laws say and to also in some cases give them something to look to and say that's what I should be doing, that's what we should say, I've got it now. Because a lot of people it's the first time they've ever taught someone to drive. So it helps, it mirrors what we want them to do, what they want to do. Thanks so much. You're welcome. We've been talking with Pennsylvania State Representative Kathy Watson. I'm Jill Horner.